Guys, we have made it to 2021. Hallelujah. Me and Grace are gonna jump into my vehicle and we are going to drive to Cape Girardeau, Missouri, a new casino. I don't even know what it's called. I just know there's a casino. It's not a new casino, no, no, no. It's a new casino for the vlog. I don't know what it's called. I don't even know who owns it, but we're gonna go there and we're gonna play poker. Texas two card, and you guys always say, but Adam, you need to play higher limits like two, five, five, ten. I can't, they don't run those games here. They only run one, two. And St. Louis runs two, threes. That's what we play. Before we go there, what is the point of a poker vlog? The point of a poker vlog is to get new players in the game. And what is a great way to get new players in the game than by backing the sponsor of this video, which is Magpie Playing Cards. And now why would you want to back Magpie Playing Cards? Because on each one of these cards, each one, every single one, there is a professional poker tip or a definition of a poker term. And why is that good? Well, that's good because if you have new people cycling in and out of your games, you're going to want them to know what they're doing. Without the poker community, let me tell you this, and you guys aren't going to like this, but if the poker community dies, if it's all just people like Rain Delay, you are going to lose money. You, yeah, you need new players in the game. This poker deck will help. Now, what you need to do to not only help me, but to help Magpie Playing Cards is go to my subscription box below. They have a Kickstarter that's about to set up, and you need to give them your hard-earned money so that you can make more money playing the game of poker. All right, we're off to Cape Girardeau. All right, I have discovered that behind me is the Century Casino. I've never even heard of it. Everybody says, show me more grace. Oh so God, it's, it's so cold. The cold front is here. All right, brand new casino in uh, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Happy to be here for checking it out. So here I have Ace Queen and uh, make a raise. And then the guy makes a 46. And I call 46. And the small blind calls 46. So we're going to the flop three ways. 139 in the middle. I'd like to flop a Royal Flush. Not asking for very much. Uh, comes Queen 6 8. That's not bad. So I have a backdoor, uh, what, backdoor flush draw there. And I got top pair and top kicker. And all of these things are good. So I should and will, I think, put in you know, money eventually. Yeah, the big blind makes it $51 if the small blind checks. It seems like a perfect time to either pounce like a puma or, or uh, hide in the in the tall grass like a, like a, I don't know, what hides in the grass? Snake? Like a snake. I'm slithering like a snake. So I call that uh, $51. Small blind gets out of the way. We're going to go heads up now to the turn. That means two players to the turn. There's two of us. Heads up, and it comes a nine. And it's not a terrible card. Only completes one straight. And when I say one straight, I mean a couple straights, but only one that he realistically could have, like the 10-jack. Uh, he bets $123, which is uh, an all-in, and I, I make the uh, the quick call there. Uh, the river's a seven, which is kind of, like, scary, but, you know, it didn't end up mattering. I had the ace-queen. He has, I believe, king-queen, uh, but we won't know for sure because his cards go into the muck, which is where they belong. And number two, under the gun limps. I'm not gonna narrate this. I never, I don't like narrating. I'm just gonna let you uh, watch up there and I'll explain what was going through my noggin at the time. Um, I don't remember what I have. Oh, I have 10 jack. So I like 10 jack because it can make a straight. It can also make quads and it can make two pair and all kinds of good stuff. But it also didn't cost me any money because I was in the big blind. That had a lot to do with why I'm still in this pot. So it comes 589. Uh, that's not a terrible board for a, uh, a big blind hand range. The button bets 10, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to see one more card here because uh, I can hit a straight, you know, and straights are good. So the turn is a king. Um, that uh, makes it a little bit harder for me to win because I didn't make a straight, and jack high is probably not good. So when the button bets $20, I think the uh, the prudent move, or at least an option, would be to to raise him, to raise it up, because he shouldn't have a king, so maybe he'll be scared of a king. He might, be, might put me on a hand like king 5, king 8, king 9. Those are all possibilities, hands I would play this way, so... I make it 60, hoping that he uh, fears that. And he picks up his cards like he's going to fold. He does a lot of things that make me think he's going to fold. Uh, but then he puts chips in the pot, which is the exact opposite of a fold. So he calls the bet. Now we're going to a river card. I'm going to need a little bit of help because I doubt very much Jack High is good. And the river's help. The river's a queen. I now have uh, the stone cold nutter butters or whatever you kids call it these days. So I uh, $150 in the pot, and I don't have that much behind because for some reason I didn't start the hand with 300 so I'll go all in, 177. He quickly folds, and he shows, uh, he actually shows two pair, uh, eights and nines, I do believe. So kind of annoying that he, he didn't pay me off there. All 
And right here, I'm in the small blind. You can tell because the button is to my right and the person to the left of the button is the small blind. Um, I have the king queen, that's a lie. I have the queen jack of diamonds, it's suited. Can make a royal flush and straights and pairs and, and quads and all kinds of good stuff. So need to pump it up here, make it $15, charge these people to, to chase me. Although they, you know, probably aren't too far off in the same hand that I have. Comes queen nine six, again, it's top pair. I like top pair, top pair is a good hand to have. So I fire out $20, and, uh, and I'm going to go straight up going for value here. The opponent that I'm playing is a, uh, he's an older man. And when I say older this time, he's actually older. He's like 75 or 80, which don't give me shit in the comments for saying that guy's old. He's old. Um, so uh, when he calls me, I'm pretty sure that he has a, you know, a queen as well. So the turn actually gives me more more ways to win if I'm losing. It actually gives me an open and a straight draw. So. So I'm cool betting here again, put some money in the pot, hopefully on the uh, river. If I am defeated, hopefully on the river I can catch up. If not, you know, top pair, jack kicker, it's a pretty good hand anyway. So putting a little bit of money in there can't be a bad thing. So my $40 bet uh, actually does get called by the old man. So that is something to, to think about going to the river. River's a 10, pairs the board, shouldn't help him too much. You wouldn't think he'd have a 10 unless he had exactly queen 10, but he probably would have raised that on the turn. So I'm going for a third street here. It's a little light, uh, a little thin, but... Uh, I'm pretty light and I'm pretty thin. So I have top two pair, kind of, you know. I have the queens and the tens, and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, he calls this bet and then uh, the pot is pushed in uh, in my general direction. But that is not what's going to happen, unfortunately. So after a very long deliberation, it's never good when an old man takes forever and then decides to put money in the pot. That's never good. He eventually does call the bet, and instead of the pot being pushed my way, uh, half of the pot is pushed my way. See how I kind of psyched you out there? You thought I was going to lose the pot. But that, that's not true. He, we had the exact same hand. So a whole a whole bunch of uh, kissing your sister or whatever they say when you split a pot. It's like, you know, kissing your, kissing your red-headed sister or something like that. All right, now I'm in the big blind. You can tell I'm in the big blind because next to my name on that graphic, it says Adam, parenthesis, big blind, parenthesis. So that's how you know. Now I have king, queen of clubs here, and here's what I should have done. This is what I should have done. I should have raised it up, and this is a problem that I've been having. I've actually been able to study the vlog and, and notice some uh, tendencies that I have in playing pots out of position, which is a bad idea, is something that I've been doing too much of, and I am going to rectify that Uh in an up you'll see coming up you'll see just keep watching every single vlog you'll see uh here uh the button bets 25 dollars after i checked it to him the natural uh flow of the pot was that he was the pre-flop better we're gonna let him bet on the flop i just call him for deception uh the river card i'm sorry the turn card is a three of clubs that makes things good for me because not only do i have top pair but i also have a flush draw now so i'm going to I'm not going anywhere. It just depends on how much he bets, whether or not I call or raise. So he bets 60, and he only has like 60 more behind. So I'm just gonna, just gonna put it in right now. So I raise it up to 120, thinking that covers him, but it actually doesn't because he has 129. So whatever. I call the nine more dollars. But the good part about that is uh, that he has to show first. But then he shows seven eight of hearts. So that's not great because now he's got two pair. I don't know that raising it preflop would have got me out of the situation. He likely would have called the bet. I mean, a three bet with eight, seven hearts anyway, especially since he has a position, but that doesn't matter. That's being results oriented. I probably, no, not probably. I should have, I should have three bet this hand preflop and uh, I paid the uh, ultimate price there for not doing that. All right, let's wrap it up. One more hand. Let's try to double up, get out of this uh, new for the vlog casino with a win. Uh, I have two red queens, which is the third best hand that you can be dealt in No Limit Texas Hold'em. I make it $15, the cutoff calls, the button folds. So this is good. We're going to go heads up to a flop, which is usually what you want. It comes king, eight, seven. So got to worry a little bit about a king, but probably shouldn't slow down here because, you know, there's only three other kings in the deck, and I might have the best hand. In fact, I'm pretty sure I do have the best hand, so I want to go a little bit of value here. But there's lots of draws you could have, like nine, ten, and five, six, and all sorts of all sorts of stuff. Hopefully it doesn't have the five, six because it's a got there. But uh, I'm not going to slow down because I'm crazy. So I bet $30 here on the turn. 
I'm kind of hoping the cutoff just calls. We really don't want to see a raise, and then we won't know what to do. He does just call, and the river comes super safe. That's a king. That means it's harder for him to have a king, right? Just math tells you that, and I'm I'm a mathematician. That's why I check. I played this hand so back assward it doesn't make any sense. So he bets thirty. I call. I think it was ass backward, ass backward, backward. Yeah, it was one of those things. And uh, he ends up showing Jack seven of spades for two pair. Uh, his two pair is worse than my two pair. And so with the last hand in the vlog, I rack up a nice little win. Okay, amigos, I'll put my mask on. Hey, before you nerd birds say anything, this is a surgical mask. It just happens to be black. So don't, I don't need your microfibers and whatever nonsense you guys come up with. Please, we're so cold. Just like and subscribe. Uh, great the camera. Oh, just sorry. like and subscribe. We're, we're freezing. Uh, do it for us. Uh, the game, uh, let's see, in for 400, out for 480 ish. Maybe a couple dollars, actually. I'm not sure. 480 ish. And her? Um, in for shit. In for 500, out for 566. So I'm the big winner, so she's gonna pay for dinner. And because it's the new year, we're not gonna eat fast food after tonight. <laughs> well, see everybody. There are no other options. <laughs> there are no other options, it's late. Okay, see everybody. Uh, please go down to the Kickstarter in the description box and, and send your hard earned money to them so they can bring some new players to the game for you. Why are you holding the camera so high? You can only see my head. My sister-in-law gave birth to twin girls and within a week of delivering her, her children, she found out that she had cancer on her placenta that then moved to different parts of her body. The pink ribbon girls stepped in and offered uh, healthy meals to be delivered to their house. They offered house cleaning if she needed, transportation to and from appointments, and also just emotional support for whatever she needed. So. I appreciate everything that they did for my sister-in-law and I'm hoping that we can raise awareness and raise some money for this charity in the next home game. Thank you very much.